He's in Portland, Oregon. Hi, Jerry. How are you? Doing great, Dave. How are you today? Better than I deserve. What's up? Hey, so I'm coming today to figure out uh, where I need to go in the baby steps. I've already finished baby step one, and I've saved $1,000 in my savings account. Um, but I have 60000 in debt. Uh, one is my car. One is a motorcycle that's now posted on Craigslist for sale. Um, and then the rest is collections, um, which is about thirty to 40000 um, Or I'm sorry, it's 20000 Uh some of the accounts and collections are between five and six years old. And I'm wondering where do those fall in line with uh, the baby steps and what gets paid off first? Gotcha. Hmm. Jerry, as you talk about this, how much of the 60 is the car? Uh, it's about 19000 Okay. And the motorcycle is how much? 18000 Okay. And you've already got that listed for sale. Any other active sure. debts outside of, of, of the stuff that's in collections? No, nothing else is in. I've, I'm a veteran, so I've gone to college for free okay. uh, on the GI Bill. Um, so I don't have any student loan debts. I don't have any more credit card debt um, because that's gone to collections years ago. Um, okay. And I just finally got a new job uh, working in high-risk security uh, where it's actually finally paying me more than I've ever made in my life. What do you make? Uh, I make $60,000 a year. Good for you. Good for you. And so have you verified these, these debts that are in collections? Do you have letters from the companies? Are they calling you? They're calling me, yes. Okay. All right. So with this, you know, in dealing with these, these collectors, I'm sure you've dealt with all different types. You'll have those that try to be your friend, others that will try to strong arm you. You know, the main thing is, is first and foremost is to ask for debt verification. That means they're going back and double checking and understanding exactly and verifying what you know for sure that you owe. And then once you get those in writing, just in looking at those, it's really a matter of following the debt snowball. You're going to attack it. But here's a little difference in the nuance. They will come to you and they'll start trying to offer you what's called a settlement offer. Um, as you okay. speak with them, and they'll start to ask you questions about the money you have. So be very guarded in your answer. Just find out what they're willing to accept. And Dave, we found they're willing to sometimes take pennies on the dollar. Yeah, that generally, especially on that old stuff. So to answer your, your front-end question, Jerry, yeah, sell the motorcycle and get the car paid off before you worry about it. Hmm. The stuff that's in collections, don't worry about it. Once the, okay. car, once the car is paid off, the motorcycle's gone, then the only thing you've got left are old, bad debts, correct? Correct. Then we're going to list those smallest to largest, and you're going to settle each one of those in a lump sum, no payments. Okay? okay. And so give me an example of one of your debts that is old. Um, I've got an old, old electricity bill from uh, whenever I lived in, actually, Parksville, Tennessee. Okay, and how old is that? It's about a hundred. It is five years old, and it's about one hundred and thirty-nine dollars. Okay, that one isn't worth screwing with. You'll just get them on the phone, yeah. verify the amount, and pay them. Okay, that's okay. that's probably one of your smallest ones. Then you've got the one that's five thousand dollars. It's a credit card from ten years ago or five years ago, right? Yes. Something like that. Now that one, you, they're gonna when you get in touch with them, you owed them four thousand dollars. Now years later, they're gonna have added collections fees and interest and late charges and a bunch of other things. Yeah. You can settle that for probably below what the original debt was in a lump sum. So let's use a pretend number. Let's say it was originally five thousand. You get a hold of them now. It's twelve thousand. So I would offer them three or four cash. Yes, sir. And they'll take it. Not immediately. Okay. There'll be some wrangling and some wrestling and some so forth, but eventually they will take it and get it in writing yes. once you get an acceptance and do not allow them to remove it directly from your checking account because they lie. <laughs> they will clean out your checking account Yes. and take the improper amount out. It's a really okay. dirty business. Okay. Yeah, Jerry. And okay. I want I would tell you to get a cashier's check when you get ready to pay it. Make a copy of that check along with the letter of settlement that they've offered you. Keep that in your file. Or a prepaid debit card yeah. that you only use for one transaction and throw it away. And you use that transaction. But you keep a co hard copy mm -hmm. of the settlement offer of $3,000 yeah. and then proof that you sent them the $3,000. Because they lie, they'll come back after you two years from now and so say you still owe money. Right, right. 
And if you don't keep documentation on this like it's a dadgum court case, telling him. you're going to be you're going to regret it. Thank you for your service, brother. Mm-hmm. We appreciate it. And Dave, you know another thing I found with this: people in the military really have to be careful because having collections it can mess with their security clearance. Yeah. And, well, he's uh, no longer in it, right? But he's in his high risk security in the same situation. They may come back on him in that. But That's yeah, right. we see the uh, the third largest reason for dishonorable discharge in the military is debt. Third money wow. problem, money problems, because okay. you lose your security clearance and you lose the, uh, you know, the 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 really the confidence of command mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is what it amounts to, and um, they they it's it's a real problem, and you know we've all heard of the. Uh, for instance, the guys and gals that are in the high risk in the battlefield scenarios, how high the suicide rate is. Yeah. But the suicide rate is also tied to relational problems back home mm-hmm. and money problems back home. Right. And could mix that with battle. Yeah. And you have a really dangerous psychological mix. Yeah, that's terrible. So we work with these guys all over the world. And um, the guys in command, gals in command know that if they can get their team um, whether it's military or otherwise, any team mm-hmm. thinking about the mission rather than their money problems, it's uh, it's less dangerous for everyone involved. It changes. So if you're if driving you, a forklift thinking about your problems with your money, it's dangerous. It really is. And know? so if you're a company out there and you go, boy, you're just kind of looking and realizing your team is struggling, Smart Dollar is the program that we have that will walk your team through the process. Just go to smartdollar.com. Uh, it's lessons on there that are taught by Dave, myself, and Rachel. Your team will be able to focus and be more productive on their job by you giving them this kind of help. Again, that's smartdollar.com.